Uh, good evening. Sorry to interrupt your program. Over time, I've had some comments about uh, ads in the middle of the video saying there's too many. And I thought, well, oh, come on, one or two click through ads. Surely that's not going to be too bad. And then someone said, no, no, it's every four or five minutes. So I looked at my dashboard and you can actually see where the ads are. And he was correct. They, every five minutes or so, there's an ad. To everybody that's had to watch all these click through ads, I apologize. I had no idea that there was that many ads. I thought there'd be one, maybe two in a 40 minute program. So that's absolutely unacceptable. So in future, any videos I produce, I'll only have one ad in the middle or I'll just take them out completely. Now the videos do earn me some small amount of revenue and I do mean small and that helps offset the cost of making the videos. So that's all I wanted to do. I don't want to make money from this thing. I don't want to pay for my hobby. I just want to try and recoup some of the cost of the video. Now if people have suggested I start a Patreon page, I don't want to do that. I'm not interested in that. As I said, I'm not interested in making money on it. I apologise. I thank you very much for your continued support and I will fix the problem in the future. G'day and welcome back. This time I've got a AWA Radiola. This is uh, Aussie built and it's probably in the 60s looking at the styling. I think I bought this at a radio club auction so um, I don't know what condition it is inside. It may well have been restored. I'll have to find out. A very elegant looking radio. I like the look of this one. The case is in good condition. It's got a couple of little issues. Uh, it's got a slight little ding in there or something, but I can probably smooth most of that out. It's got a small chip here and a tiny crack behind it, but I'll just fix that with some uh, super glue and it'll be fine. Uh, the dial seems to be directly coupled to the tuning condenser. This clear plastic around here is slightly yellow, uh, but it's not, not too bad. It doesn't detract too much. Now, I haven't got any info on this. I, I don't know what the model number is. There's a number on the back, but it's smudged. I can't read it. If I can't find what the model number is, I'll go online and just look at photos of these radios and I should be able to find it that way. In the meantime, I'll pull it apart. Uh, this is it it's a five valve set of course uh, still got a rectifier in it um, the output valve is up here so this is backwards isn't it it's got the tuner next to the transformer output end is up that end so it doesn't flow as they normally do because rectifier is here so uh, all right whatever uh, now that's not a 6m5 that's a 6 aq5 i think for the output valve i'll right, we'll flip it over and see what's underneath There's the bottom and uh, yeah, as I thought, it's been recapped already, so this should just work. There's a couple of new electrodes there. Um, there's an electro here that's poking through the bottom, but that's been disconnected. So it all looks pretty good here. Um, I think I'll plug it in and see if it works. All right, ready to go. I've got 236 on the dim bulb. I'll put it on dim bulb, put some power on, see what happens. Nothing, turn it on, there we go. <laughs> dim bulbs. Working perfectly. And we've got good voltage there. Good wattage. Yeah, so this will work. There it is. December, because he's keen to come up and say good day. And I've got to tell you, I'm, I'm pretty excited. I've got family in Sydney who I, um, I'm hoping oh. to now see. I'm feeling, I'm feeling great That's the tone. about the uh, prospect. I put a knob on the other end thinking it was the volume, but it's the tone. I think I'll go to full power, it's working alright. Let's put the dial back on, a bit easier to tune, but uh, it's working okay. With the population into a hotel quarantine for whatever periods necessary until their flights can take them home. And we've been doing that really since I guess it's been the beginning mid May. And we've seen about. You're on the travel list. It's working alright, but it doesn't seem very sensitive. It's not picking up all the stations it should. There's a lot of noise in here and that affects it, but. Uh, it should be better than that. Due to its mediocre performance, I'm wondering if I should check the alignment and uh, 
just sure, make sure it's been done properly. I found the service data for this radio and it's a 586MA. Forgot to look at the date, I think it was 61 or something. This is a comprehensive document. It's got all the alignment data here too. Uh, 455 is the IF frequency. I want to see where the IF frequency is set. I'm just going to run the uh, signal generator back and forth through the frequency till it peaks. And I can read off what the frequency is and that'll tell me if it's 455 or where it is. I've connected the signal generator through a 0.01 capacitor. I've connected the generator to the top of the tuning capacitor here and that's equivalent of putting it on the grid of the uh, mixer valve. I've also got a counter here that's uh, checking the frequency of the uh, generator as it goes to the radio. Uh, the generator's running. I've got it on minimum output and I've got it on minus 40 on the attenuator too. So we should have a nice small signal. I'll turn it up and hope that there's something there. All right. So I'll just adjust the generator until I get maximum output. All right, that's it. So it's running at about 456.41, it says there. Uh, not too far out, and that's probably the difference between my generator and whoever calibrated it last. But I will align it to 455. All right, I've got my generator set on 455 now. I've set everything else up. I've also connected the dummy speaker on so we can get rid of the noise if we need to. So that's on full volume, and of course the generator's on minimum. Okay, I'm going to adjust this one. We'll see what we can get out of it. Not much. I haven't got a lot of signal on the uh, meter there. Uh, here's the bottom of them there, one and there, one there, so just let me adjust those. I've done it about three or four times on each uh, slug there and brought it back. It's up slightly from what it was. Now my concern was that one was adjusted high and one was low and you weren't quite on the 55. You'd get 55 but you weren't on it. So uh, that should be peaked on the 55. Uh, the next thing is to check the alignment of the dial. Now here's the adjustments for all that. Uh, tuning capacitor here of course. Here's the oscillator coil. Uh, that'll adjust the frequencies down low so around the 600 area. Uh, there's a fixed capacitor here. This is wound on a little uh, former and you can wind off wire or put a bit of wire on if you want to. Uh, the factory set that at that length. I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to touch that. Now this adjustment here is the antenna trimmer. So when we've got it at uh, say 1400 uh, kilocycles, I'll adjust that for maximum signal strength. And that's all we can do on this. So that's not adjustable. And this loop stick antenna, uh, if it hasn't got any adjustment on it, it's covered in a wax. So I can't adjust that either. All right, I've aligned the dial there uh, at about the horizontal position, so that's uh, zero, that's on the stop. And in the tradition of Australian radios, they don't put frequency marks on here, they just make you guess. So I'm going to align it to QR. Now this QR is the position it was uh, when this radio was made, and the frequency of QR then was uh, 590. Now it's uh, 612, so uh, I need to mark this on the old frequency, which is 590, so I've put it on there. I've got my frequency generator on 590. So that doesn't sound too bad. Uh, so we've got some signal there, so it's not too far out. So I'll adjust this oscillator. Whoa, hang on. Just turn the noise off. Alright. That's it there. So now that's aligned at 590. Now the other station at the end of the dial is 4BH. So I'll just go around there. And we'll put it on the middle of there somewhere. I've set the generator to 1390 now. I'll just put the sound back on for a second. Here yeah, we're almost right on it. The adjustment at this point for the, about the 1400 would be this trimmer here. It's been factory set. I'm not going to play with it. I think it'll be spot on. So I'll just tune the dial and just watch the meter there. There it is there. I think I'll leave it there. I could split the difference, I guess. I could come back here, say to there. And just adjust the oscillator to peak it there, and that will split the difference between... Oh, look, it's that close, look. So there we're almost on 4BH. 
and if I go back to QR I'll have a look to see where that is. Alright I've set my generator back on 590 and uh, we'll just peak this and just see where we are. And that's it. Look that's pretty good isn't it? That's close enough. Nice big numbers you can go anywhere there. Uh, okay I'm happy to leave that. Now the last thing I need to do is trim the antenna. Now I've got my generator back on 1390 I'll just peak this station here I've got my screwdriver and that antenna trimmer. Just adjust this until I get the maximum I can get out of it. And that's it. It was pretty close. So that's it for the dial. I'll take all this gear off and uh, put the speaker back on and we'll see how it goes. The radio is powered up. I'll just turn it up and we'll see how we're going. Uh, it's currently on 4BH there. There's nothing there. No. So I'll go down to 4BC. Which is right there. That's right on. Now that's uh, the racing channel. That's up the top here. There's no marking on the dial for that. And the next one we get properly is this one here, up the top here. This is uh, Radio National or 4RN. So that's pretty good. Uh, the next one coming up will be down the bottom here. That's 4KQ. That'll be just past. Yeah, so that's where I would expect it to be. And the last one will be uh, 4QR, and that will be well short. So that's that one there. Now, one of the things that was uh, wrong with, with originally was when I went to 4BH, which is about here now, that's the one that's down here. They've moved it up further up the scale here or further down the frequency. And there it is there. And that used to have whistling around. You couldn't uh, get it because of the whistling noise. So, yeah, so that's all gone. So that's a good result. And it's picking the stations up in the right places. So we're very happy with the alignment there. So I'll move on to the next bit. These are the volume and tone knobs. Uh, they're not real good. They've got these rings on them, which really uh, destroys them after 60 or 70 years. This one's just gone brown, so I assume that was the one facing the sun more than this one, or it's a replacement knob, I don't know. Uh, whatever it is, I'm going to retro brighten, and uh, that should bring it back. It works on this sort of plastic. Uh, this is typical looking computer plastic to me, uh, so I think it'll work okay. Now, I've taken the little springs off the knobs there, and this is a food saver type um, vacuum bag. That you keep your food fresh in and vacuum it down if you want to. I'm going to put some of this uh, cream peroxide for hair. It's about 12% peroxide. This works quite well and it's fairly cheap and I can buy it down the shop. Whoops. All right, I'm going to take that back to the vacuum machine. I will try and put a pocket of air in there and vacuum it shut and then I'll throw it out in the sun uh, for the rest of the day and we'll have a look at it later tomorrow. This is the tubes that comes with the food saver wrap and it's the perfect diameter for making those capacitors and that's what I've been using to uh, replace the uh, mains electrolytic capacitors in American radio. So uh, this is absolutely spot on for size. Uh, quite robust, very robust actually. I buy the food wrap rolls at, at Aldi so this is out of their uh, product. Uh, there it is, I've sealed it up and I'll just go throw that on the back lawn and move it around from time to time. Keep smooshing the, uh, uh, the peroxide around so that it um, covers it all the time. I just want to clean this up a little bit. The chassis has got what looks like rust on it and it almost looks like something spilt on it like a liquid or something just looking at the dots everywhere but uh, it does look like rust. I don't know. Yeah, it's rust or right. So I don't know why it decided to rust there and not there. So all I'm going to do is clean off that extra rust, put a rust converter on it and then maybe just touch it up with a rust inhibiting paint or something to just stop it from spreading. So I'll just see what a scourer does to it. Yeah. I think that's all it needs. Just take the top of the rust off, treat it, and then I'll reprotect it. I've cleaned up the chassis as much as I need to. Uh, I've treated all the rust with some rust converter. I'll let that uh, work for half an hour or so. And what I think I might do is take that off and I might just paint some clear over it. Because if I put spots of um, silver on it, it's going to look silly. 
So maybe just paint it clear and accept that this chassis is 60 odd or whatever it is years old. Alright, the rust is treated. I've wiped it off with some water and then some uh, methylated spirits or wood alcohol or whatever you guys call it. And uh, it's ready to paint. Now I've got this stuff here. It's called Rust Guard. Uh, it's clear. Uh, it's gloss unfortunately, but that's all I could get. And I've very roughly masked it off. I'm not that worried about it. I just want to get around these areas where the rust is and where it's been treated just to put a top coat on it. I'll tell you what, that's put a good coat on there. I'm impressed with the way that's gone on. Anyway, I'll let it dry off. It takes an hour or so. I'll leave it overnight and I'll have a look in the morning. Okay, that paint's dried. Um, look, it looks awful. It's just rust with clear coat over it. It looks terrible. Now, I'm not going to do any more to the chassis because it's got no value to me as a collector's item. I just wanted to get it going, put it on the shelf. Maybe I'll sell it. So it's going to have to stay like that. Maybe in 20 years, someone will come along and say, hey, this looks nice. I'll fix it up and they'll strip it down like I should have and uh, spray it and make it look like new. So what I'm going to do is take all this tape off, put the valves back in and uh, that'll be it as far as the chassis is concerned. Well, I've taken the tape off and there's the valves. Uh, I'm going to put this aside and have a look at the case. Here's the case and all it really needs is a bit of a polish. I think whoever did this before me's already done it. Uh, so I'll polish it. I did notice there's a crack here now. So I'll super glue that back together. There's a crack down there and I've just super glued that from the inside just to hold it. I can't really do much with that. I could perhaps smooth it off a bit and that's about all. Uh, there's a little mark there. It looks like a burn mark or something. I'll, I'll just smooth that off as well. So apart from that, it just needs a good polish. The front's in very good condition as well. There's a similar mark here to what was on the base there. Uh, it looks like something's burnt it or something. So I'll just smooth that off. Apart from that, I'll just wipe that clean and again polish the, uh, the plastic. Otherwise, it's in good condition. Now it's got little rubber mounts here, these are hard as a rock now, uh, so I'll take those off, I'll probably have another bit of rubber I can put on there. There's that little mark there, I'll just try and rub it out with some sandpaper. Right, that's as good as that's going to get. I, when I said rub it out, I, I made a mistake, I, I can't, it's below the surface, so all I can do is smooth it out, I should have said. I have some uh, Plastex polish, and uh, this is pretty lightweight stuff, but it'll it'll do for this. It, this really doesn't need any work. I'm just I'm just doing this to <laughs> I'm just doing this to go through the motions, I think. Um, but it'll it'll clean it up a little bit. I forgot to mention I glued that little crack there. That looks alright, uh, there's nothing wrong with it to start with, I'm just sort of cleaning it up a bit. So I'm going to finish that case off, I'll do the rest of it. As I said before, this dial's gone yellow, I doubt very much it was like this when they made it, it was no doubt clear. Now it has got some sort of marking in here that I'll try and get rid of. Uh, I don't want to take these lines off because they're, uh, they're too fine and I'd have trouble getting them back on. So I'll try and clean up in there with the uh, polish, see if it makes any difference. Otherwise, it's going on as it is. So I'll just use a bit of the Maguire's on, on this as well. That's come up okay, nice and glossy that side. Uh, this side I think has got the imperfections. It's also got the line, as I said, I've got to keep away from that. Oh, I'd say that was completely unsuccessful. It's a bit hard to see, but there's some sort of shading inside the plastic. Uh, it doesn't appear to be on this side either so uh, I, I can't do anything. I'll just quickly polish this side and I'll have to leave it like that. I couldn't see it when it was on the radio so not too worried about it. Time to put this back in its case so I'll just put the case up on the bench. I'll just feed the lead through the back there. It's got to go in these little guide rails here, so I've just got to make sure I get that right. There we go. Just got to get the aerial and the ground wire out of here as well. There we go. Now I'll just flip it upside down.
Now I've put the four screws in loose, these are the ones on the back. I now can tighten them all up. There's a metal bar that holds the front on, so I'm just going to put the screws in and I'll just do them up a few threads. Alright, that'll hang down and there's little tangs on the front that go in there and then get clamped when they do the screws up. I've glued some little U-shaped rubber on here where the uh, original rubber was. And this is the tang that'll fit under that bar there. So I'll assemble it upside down so the bar hangs down. There you go. And that'll tighten the bar up on the front there. And I'll put the dial back on, he says. There we go. Now I've just got to turn that around and line it up horizontal. Looks pretty good. Now if I spin it around here to 4QR, that should tune in when we turn the power on. I've just retrieved the bag of peroxide with the two knobs in it. They've been out for a day or so. Um, look, that's the one that was discoloured the most. Um, this one probably wasn't discoloured at all, really. Uh, this one's come up okay. It's not perfect. Uh, as far as it looks as a knob, it looks much better. Uh, and there it is compared to the old one. So it has worked to a degree, but not as much as I would have liked. But anyway, it'll be fine. Now the other issue it has is they used to use these rings around the plastic to squeeze it in on the shaft. And once the plastic got old, of course, it just cracked and broke off. Uh, it's got a slot up there. Let's see if I can put something else on there. Now this is what they used to use in the knobs. Uh, it would be better, give it more even pressure, uh, but it doesn't fit. <laughs> so I don't know if I can stretch it. Well, I think that'll work if I can spring it out a bit further. It's a bit small at the moment. Now I changed my mind halfway through. I did put that spring collar on this one and uh, I fitted it on the radio and it's fine, but I'm not going to take it off again. I just wanted to test it, uh, but I'll leave it there. They're too fragile. So I'll just put this other knob on. There we go. Nice. All right. All back together now. This is an AWA radiola. It's from about 1958 to 61, I believe. It's a model 586MA and I'll just turn it on. We'll see how it goes. Half century, 108 minutes and four boundaries. So he's had considerably less of the strike mm. than Aaron Finch, who's on 57 off 82. Here's Jadeja bowling to Finch and the right hand it goes big over mid wicket wide of log on one. Beautiful. Oops, I've left that on too long. Hang on, get down here. Asia in the fence again, and this time he's defending to mid wicket. Cry of. Yeah. This is a that covers 90% of the state. Who's now T. Who's drawn the outside. That's working really well. Sounds great. It's got a, a nice sound, these, these radios from the 60s. They really nailed it. Any radio with its own antenna, it picks up every bit of rubbish that's floating around in here, so it's hard to get a clear signal. This is a very short video, and I apologise, there's nothing interesting in this video at all. It's just a nice looking radio, it's an elegant looking radio, but it has no value to me, so I was happy to just get it going. I'll put it on the shelf, I might even use it, it actually sounds really good. And I take it back, the Retrobrite technique on this knob has worked quite well. I think it improves after you've taken it out of the packet. It probably doesn't, maybe it's just me, but it really looks good. That's come up terrific now. Once again, apologies, this was not a very interesting uh, video. It's very short, so I'm going to tack some other videos on the end of this one. So next time, I hope to do something a bit more interesting, and I hope you can join me for my next radio adventure. But there's more. Just before I go, there's something I wasn't totally happy with. While I was editing the video, I could see this um, dial moving up and down quite a lot. I did notice that it had a fair bit of play in it when I was doing the radio, but uh, it's it hasn't got any slack in it. It's just moving on its rubber mounts. So I didn't worry about it, but I'll see if I can tighten them up or change the mounts or something. Now to start with, I'll just get this plate off the front. Now this isn't the way I thought it was going to work. Uh, this plate here, which I thought was going to come away, is actually fitted to the chassis 
and this is mounted to that. So in order to get to the rubbers, I'm going to have to desolder all the connections on the uh, capacitor here and, and try and get it out. These are a bit hard to unsolder in these tight conditions, so I'm going to cut the wire. There's enough wire there to reconnect it. All right, well, I've cut all the wires, so I should be able to get it out. <laughs> okay, can't get it out. Oh, gosh. Okay, uh, I can't get that out of there with the transformer there. I've come too far to turn back, so I'll take the transformer away and we'll see what happens. I think this is what they mean when you talk about going down a rabbit hole. All right, let's see if I can get it out now. Yeah. Uh, there's three little rubber grommety mounts there. Uh, gee, the, the amount of movement there is nothing. But I'll replace those rubbers and that should fix it. Yeah, so the rubber's gone. Yeah, okay. Yeah. They're just falling apart. Particularly that one there. That was the one that was uh, seemed to be the looser of the two. Three. These rubbers are somewhat bigger than the hole. So I'm working pretty hard to get them to go in. But uh, I did get it in. I got one in. There it is. Yeah, pretty hard work to get these in. All right, let me do the last one and I'll come back. I'm just putting the spacers in. This is the last one. These are very much tighter than they were in the old one. So I'm going to use the screw to pull them through. Uh, let's see how it went. Yeah, that's much better. It's still got a bit of spring in it, but um, quite tight. So, okay, beauty. So what I'll do now is clean up the solder on the end of these tabs here, and then I can put it back in. Now I've taken some of the insulation off all the wires that need to connect to it. So it's just a matter of putting this back in, I guess. There we go. I'll put the mount screws back on the front here. I'm just using the marks on the bracket there to line this up again so we get it back in the center of the dial. That should be alright. That can be adjusted later if it needs to be. All right, just give me a second. I'll solder all these wires back on and uh, we'll come back and finish off. Okay, that's all done. I'll just turn the power on. I'll just give it a quick test if we can. Make sure it's connected it up properly. It's on for the most part of the hearing. On this part, you were doing this terrible. <laughs> All right, that's working properly now, so I'll put it back in its case and we can see how much difference it's made to the wobbliness. Now, I've temporarily refitted the fascia and I've put the dial on just to center it in the bezel. Uh, it just seems a little high. I don't think there was any adjustment for down anymore, but I'll take it off just see if I can get it a bit lower and we'll try it again. So just loosen the screws a little bit. No, I think that's about it. So I'm not getting any better than that. So I'll do them up. That'll have to do. There it is all together again. And that dial is so much better. It's not moving around at all. It's great. So I'm a little ashamed I didn't pay more attention to it. I, I said I did look at it, but I just thought, oh, no, that's not too bad. But uh, thanks for persevering with me while I fix that. Um, yeah, that's much better now. Much happier. And once again, thanks for watching. <laughs> Just another one of my wacky catch-up videos. I, I thought I'd look at this Emerson again. When I left it last time, I had parts not arrived yet, so I'm going to just update it. In the original video, I wasn't sure if this little telltale light was factory or it had been added later, but uh, I, looking at it now, I'm pretty sure that's been added later by somebody else. Also, the dial on here is not the original. This is something that someone's added. I don't know if they've printed it themselves or it's professionally provided, you know, as a, a replacement dial. I don't know. Uh, but that that's why it had this crazy looking um, dial pointer on it. And of course this one here is the 3D printed um, pointer. 
But whatever the story is, uh, that dial at the back is looks very original. It looks very similar to one, some of the dials that they did have on this radio. If you watch the original video, you'll know that I had a 12 SQ7 tube or valve, and it was very weak. So I've got a new one here. It's a new old stock one. So I'm going to try it out and see if it makes any difference. What I thought I'd do before I changed the tube over was just measure the AGC. Now, according to my tube tester, the uh, two diodes in this thing were virtually not functioning. So what I thought I'd do is measure the AGC with the old valve or tube in situ, then replace it and just see if it makes any difference to the AGC. Does it have to bring it back further? I don't know if that's a valid test or not. It may, I might be just making this up. Now, the only other way I could think of doing it is pumping a signal generator, a signal through it, measuring the voltage, then changing the valve and see if the voltage goes up. But uh, not that interested really, it's just thought it was a bit of fun. So I'll just measure the voltage now. I've got my brand new VTVM here, it's about 60 years old. And we're on this 15, um, 15 uh, volt scale here. So we're measuring about five and, a half, five and a half volts. That's on the AGC. So if I replace the valve, we'll see what happens. I've replaced that tube and I'll see if it makes any difference. I suspect it won't make any. And what have we got? Uh, it's got a slight <laughs> quarter of a volt difference. So uh, it's now reading about five and three quarters. Yeah, so that's made little difference. I actually meant to keep the volume up and I forgot to turn it up before it shut the thing down. COVID-19 and the recession it has caused is a crisis. It's working very well. Maybe I will put the generator on. We'll swap the tubes out again, see if it makes any difference. I've set the signal generator up on 582, that's just some number that it came up. I've put my meter here and that's measuring the voltage straight from the speaker. I've just disconnected the speaker, I'm keeping the volume low so it won't affect it. So what I'll do is I'll run this meter up to sit on about 3 for no reason at all. There we go. Yeah, close enough. Now I'll shut it down uh, and change the valve over to the old one. We'll see if it makes a difference. So the original tube's in, it's just warming up now, and what are we going to do? It's coming up close to the three again. Yeah, well it didn't prove anything, it's uh, back exactly on the three. That original 12 SQ7, when I tested it, it didn't measure at all on the diodes, and it was just came off the stop for the, for the uh, triode section. Now the new valve I got, when, it, when I tested that, it was perfect. So... It just goes to show you can't rely on a valve tester. If it works on the radio, it's probably okay. Now I've finally got delivery of my wire capacitor, so I'm going to change the one on the antenna here, and there's one underneath that connects to the chassis. I'll replace both those. I'll put it all back in the box, and we'll give it a test. It's all back together again, and we'll just see if it's working still. Stopping in cans. Right. But what, we, what we're proposing is while the international borders remain closed... <laughs> for some good luck with this project. Pleasure. Thanks for having me on, Fran. Nova per, per, Nova per. All right, that's working just fine with the new valve. I, I don't know if it's much better than when it was had the old valve, so I probably just wasted my money buying a new one. Even though it's got a small speaker, it actually sounds pretty good. So, yeah, nice little radio. Anyway, thanks for joining me, and thanks very much for watching part two of this little Emerson radio.